single tree. And since the, it was uh, six years ago that I ran the course for the last time, there's probably another 6,000 trees that have come in. For example, here's another black walnut right here. Now this looks like, uh, no, that's one of the, that's like about a four-year-old. So every year there's a rain of black walnut and sugar maple and an American beech that comes into this place. So there's probably 12 or 15,000 trees here now that every year the grounds department tries to kill and they fail. <laughs> uh, but as far as the university is concerned, they have secured their cash investment in this property. Yeah. And I still think that this, this represents the hope of biodiversity because it's possible still because they haven't turned it into the Rogers, other side. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this could always be simply doubling the size of the dairy bush. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, whether it does or not, it's controlled really by student opinion. Yeah. Because there's a lot of press that could be gendered about this place. I mean, you look at it, it's a fabulous piece of land that's undergoing development. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not like typical secondary succession, it's jumped right from the Canada Goldenrod to forest trees. And if you just let it go, yeah. it'll go like the corner. And uh, in 10 years, you won't be able to bring in a bush mower because you'll have to bring in a chainsaw instead. <laughs> so, oh boy. Uh, so that's it. And the kids were thrilled with their own results. It's like, holy shit, it already is a forest. It's just that nobody's letting it express itself. Yeah. So. And William Brown, of course, I mean, he was the one who started this over 100 years ago, 130 years ago now. He would be going, yeah, <laughs> like, I already showed those guys, you know, because his plan was to see if it was possible to bring something back from heavy disturbance. And it is. All you have to do is let it go. Yeah. I hate to sound like the movie Frozen, but, you know, but you just let it go, it comes back. Yeah. We've got dispersers, we've got wind, we've got adjacency. It's. Got yeah, you've got 10,000 years of soil development here. Yeah. I mean, the, the drumlin has never, except for, for for the farming that's been taking place on it, uh, it's never been removed yeah. like it has been in many of the industrial lots around here. And, and, you, and you look at the woody plants and you say, they just want a chance. And I just laugh. I just laugh because I think John Reinhardt, too, knows that when he mows it, he's not actually killing the trees. He's just removing the evidence of the trees. You know, which is which is funny. It's like it's like it's like the proverbial ostrich sticking its head in the sand. Like yeah. I don't want to know that it's already an ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to pretend that it's a mowed field ready to sell to somebody. Yeah. So, so in the yeah, because in the campus master plan, it's talked about as being still actively as being repurposed. Right. As just as it's been on the other right. end, and right. and, exactly. and at this side as well. Exactly. Yeah. And it's. Yeah. And. and you know what, to give them credit, yeah. it's true. It's just that the purpose isn't theirs. Yeah. It's the dairy bushes. Yeah, yeah. Like while they sit and- So we can use that verb. Right. Yeah, exactly right. It is being right. repurposed yeah. right now. You look around, it's being repurposed into forest. Yeah. You know, and, and the species composition has already been established. It's that. Yeah. And uh, it just wants to be let, let, let go. Yeah. Now, we had for 20 years to secure this place from development. Um, it started with the naming of Brown's Woods. Yeah. I mean, th that I thought I didn't think that I'd ever be able to pull that off. But Mordecai Rosansky was really. After we published that paper, there was one paper I published about this. The '96 one, yeah. Yeah, and it's a crappy paper, uh, <laughs> but it established that this is that, that Brown's Woods is the first experimental. At least it's it's the last. It's the first. It's the first experimental forest plantation. Plus, it's also. Um, one of the last ones to survive because yeah. all the others that once were existing in North America they've all been cut down yeah so it hasn't been cut down and this is the second one and it hasn't been cut down so you know those are two kudos and yeah. I think Rosansky recognized that hey that's pretty shit hot yeah you know like how'd we pull that off and it was only by uh, uh, benign neglect at one stage OAC wanted to build their alumni hall in the middle of bronze woods <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> Yeah, That's the plan was to clear cut it and put a nice, I mean, to have a nice building in sure. a forest. You know, and there was another time, I guess this would have been about 96, just about the time we published that first paper. The city was ready to declare it a, a piece of natural heritage. Yeah. And I had to call their forester and say, it's not natural. Yeah. It's a completely human built artifact. In yeah. fact, it's a nice one. So it should be, I mean, if you want to consider it natural, go ahead, but it, only if we include humans as part of nature, you know, so, which gets into the whole philosophical thing.
but this is because it's far bigger and far better in terms of, of scope and scale yeah. uh, is, is the real is the real treasure and I, what I used to love doing was in the fall I bring the students through before showing them the aerial photographs and I would say to them walking from the family housing complex up that path I said well, what is this you know, the first job of an ecologist anywhere is to look at a, a thing and say what am I looking at and how did it get here? So they would walk the trail and I would say, what is it? And they would say, well, it's a, it's a forest. And I would say, is it one forest? Is it all integrated or has it got pieces, patches? And they would say, well, don't know. So I'd get them to walk through this part. And in the fall, this part looks depauperate in the understory because yeah. the spring ephemerals have all died yeah. back. And they say, well, this side looks a little sick. <laughs> and this side looks a lot better because there's a lot more green in it. And I would point out that the green is composed largely of exotics. And they would go, oh, so they're not native to North America. So I'd, so I'd say, yeah, well, so how did they get here? And they, I don't know. And then they'd look around. I'd, if you walk along that path down the hill, if you look to the left or the right and walk slowly and you look at the trees, eventually you'll see that they're in rows. Yeah. And that, so that would, the walnuts are the ones that stand yeah. out. So they would, only the odd student, maybe one in ten would notice this. And they would say, Dr. Larson, here, if you look that way, the trees look like they're in rows. And I, so I'd say to them, this is a statistical question, do trees form regular patterns? Would you expect any plant to grow in a row? And they'd go, uh, no. And they're all about the same size. I said, would you expect in a forest to have even ages. And they didn't know about forest ecology, yeah. so they'd say, no, they should all be different. So well, how did we get trees of the same size in rows? And they would go, well, they'd come up with harebrained screams. I'd say, what do you think about a plantation? And they would go, this is, again, before they read me, yep. it could be a plantation, but look at it. <laughs> you know, like, it, it doesn't look like it a plantation. Like, it, it's all like, lush and everything yeah. tall and majestic and I'd say can't yeah, walk through there and then I would tell them the story and they would go no shit <laughs> like it was it had deceived them yeah. and they loved that it had deceived them yeah. and then they loved the stories behind the deception because it's all based on William Brown's idea that one could one could recover from uh, landscape clearing yeah. of the type that was done by our European ancestors that that we didn't have to, we didn't have to destroy everything and just sit back with, with mineral soil flooding into the rivers and salt. Yeah. Right. You could you could do something to recover from this. Yeah. When they found what William Brown's sort of mantra was back in the 1880s, they went, we're still we're still talking about that. Like, and I would say, yeah. So, what do you think about old pieces of shit like me? You know, like old people. You know, are there any ideas that were once? Um, out there and then sort of died a death for some reason or other and they would go yeah so people have been thinking about this for a long time and that means we haven't given up yeah. it really is a hundred years worth of not giving up yeah. on trying to recover in North America from what we did to it because yeah. what we did to the to the forests here is a bit like what the Romans did in Great Britain which was to take a perfectly and thoroughly covered forested landscape and reduce it to grass yeah yep Right. And so, oh wow! So suddenly, history comes alive for them, and they just love the idea that this place was right there. They could walk to it. Yeah. They didn't have to get in a car. You know, the, all of those really interesting questions in biology, at least in terrestrial biology, are sitting here, just waiting for them to ask the question. You yeah. know, like, what is this thing? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. To cross the road and to actually enter the place, their this place, their place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 what could be someone else's. I mean, if they allow themselves to have the same vision as William Brown, then, then these seedlings that are, you know, all around us yeah. could be that in a hundred years. Yeah. If they just leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah they, uh, well, it is, a, it is a, it's marvelous, even though it's just a field. Well, yeah, a field with 6,000 trees. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe 12 now. Nascent, nascent trees, a nascent forest. I mean, there's, there's three in a square meter here. Yeah. You know, so yeah, a little thinning is needed. So what year was it that, um, was it Pete Kelly that mm -hmm. did the, the dendrochronology? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so I quit in 2000. Um, 
and this is my fifth year, so 2000, uh, 2009 is when I quit. So Pete did that um, probably 2008 or seven. Yeah. And he, when you were looking, you so he you only were, looked at Sugar Maple. Yeah. Right. And he did uh, all the records are in the in the in the binder. Yep. Um, I, th I think there were. 25, did I think that's about right. Tree. Yeah, and the oldest one went back to 1775 or something. So pre Galt. Oh, pre pre, pre U.S. Um, Constitution. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. 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 We, uh, we, and the trees. We, the, the best part about it is that the the plot of age versus diameter is biphasic, right? Because when it was significantly thinned about 1910, yeah, the next cohort grew like bombs. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't take everything out, but the seed, they created a huge opportunity for, for seed, seedling recruitment. Yeah. So you've got trees that are this big that are 240 years old, and trees that are this big that are 80 years old. Yeah. And you, you can't tell by looking at a tree, which is another interesting thing from a, from a student's point of view. It's yeah. like, so what is that as opposed to what is that? Like, and what do these two th t things tell you about yeah. forest development? Yeah. Right? Just, just doing a size class analysis, you know, yeah. size versus age, tells you a lot. Yeah. So, you know, he didn't do it to the beach, and nobody's done it on the on the ash. So it, it could be that the same demographic properties apply to those two. But I could never get a student. You know, it was yet to be done. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, with those kids in in the, in the forty one ten course, I never wanted to tell them what I would like to have done. That sort of takes away. Yeah. They would always say, "Give us a project," yeah. and I would say. They're in your head. No, the cool part of that project, of that course, is you tell me it, the project. And it's ownership. Yeah. Uh, ownership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have to be free enough to, to, to sit back for hours and go, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. He's going to want to just 